Welcome back to the first episode of Balancing Chaos in 2018 with Kelly and Gretchen. And today we're going to be talking about the new year and new year resolutions and what we hope to accomplish and what we are proud of accomplishing and all of that. So um, first of all, what have you done? What did you do in 2017? What's one thing you've done in 2017 that you're like, all right, I'm glad I did that. You know, I you asked me this a couple minutes ago and... <laughs> I thought, oh boy, I'm not, there's nothing I'm particularly proud of, but I did kind of forget that my primary goal in 2017 was to take it easy. (laughs) 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 Because I, ever since I graduated college, well, all through college, I worked a lot of hours and did school. And then I graduated and was a new nurse for a year, not even a year, and I went back to school. Then I worked full-time and went to school full-time for two years. Then I went for my PhD, which that was one of my most difficult. That was the And had kids. And then I had a kid by accident, an an unplanned child during the first semester. So we had no family support, a newborn, in a city which we were living in severe, extreme poverty and earning a PhD, trying to earn a PhD. And then we moved... Then we were, this whole time we are trying to get out of debt, so you couldn't do anything fun. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because we're going to talk about that later. It's not really true, but it is kind of. <laughs> and then we moved back home, and then we had to save up money for a down payment. So I was working three jobs, and then I had another child, and then we moved home. And I just feel like my life has been total chaos for 10 years yeah. or more. And you're so, kind of an overachiever anyway. So yeah. you're overachieving, you're overachieving. So really, taking it easy is an Yeah, actual I'm like, actually, I did accomplish what I... It was really good. Like, I took it super easy this summer. I read a book in a hammock one day. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, read, I read books um, at the beach club. Yeah. I took my Kindle down, and because there's lifeguards, I didn't really have to worry about the kids, and I could sit there and read. It was awesome. Um, I would say that my accom- my accomplishment that I'm most proud of is that I have become, and I said this on our Facebook page, which you can join the conversation there, too, but uh, that I became... I found my voice politically, mm-hmm. which... <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> we Anyone who knows her well knows she did, too. <laughs> I did. So, and so I, um, like a lot of people in my position and my gender and all of that, not fond of the current administration. And so, and we live in Maine, so we have Susan Collins, who is a very influential Republican senator. And I had the opportunity to... Tell her to save health care on the Capitol steps when I went with the Girl Scout trip. And then, and actually both of my daughters appeared in her Instagram because one was the big Girl Scout picture and the other one was when she came to school for the Blue Ribbon Award to our yes. kids' school. There's a picture of her talking to my daughter. And apparently she was, my daughter was saying, my sister met you in Washington. So it <laughs> kind of ties back. That's so cute. But I've been, then I go and comment on her Instagram like, yep, yeah, that's my daughter and you need to save her health care. You need to make sure that you vote yeah. right. And she did not vote favorably with the tax plan. But I have really found my voice and hope to expand on that. And the other thing is that that I'm really proud of is that I finally started a podcast yeah. with my friend Kelly, yes. which is, I have been listening to podcasts since 2005. Did you even know they existed wow. back then? So you're the pioneer of podcast listening. Well, when I was, so I, I was in grad school and I was pregnant and I bought my MacBook for grad school and it was like the deal came with a free iPod mini, mm-hmm. which is like the old school iPod. And so I would listen to podcasts and go for walks around the campus because I've always preferred like podcasts or the spoken word to music for stuff like that because I can really focus when I'm out walking. So I've been listening to podcasts for 13 years and always been like, oh, I would love to do that. And now I'm doing it. So I'm very excited that we have started a podcast. That's awesome. So those so those are a couple of my accomplishments. So did you have a good holiday? Yes, I did. Are you glad your kids are back in school? Yes, I am. (laughs) Well, for any of you who don't live in the state of Maine, we have been dealing with record low temperatures. Sometimes with the windshield, it's negative 22. I think it's red. And every day my Facebook feed is just people taking pictures of the thermometers in their cars. Well, we got... How much snow did we get on on Christmas Day? We got dumped on. What is snow? And then the temperature plunged because we were supposed... We went skiing, but we didn't really ski. After, you know, we skied like the the bigger kids skied more than any of us. I went out for like half an hour with Willa. Oh my gosh! But it was the first day. It was twenty seven below outside, and we we're like, "No, you can't go out. You're gonna die." Mm-hmm. 
And but today is the first day that it's warmed up above a single digit, and it's 19 <laughs> degrees out. And so when we both met up to record this, we we're like, "Oh my god, it's, it's so, so warm!" warm. Out. <laughs> it's just tropical. But we're still waiting. We're about to get 14 to 18 inches. Oh so we normally record on Thursday, but we're recording a day early so that we can beat the storm okay. and get this up and ready for our loyal listeners this week. But it's just been so cold. And this and it and the snow is great, but if it's so cold, you can't go out. And no, it's worthless. I mean, my kids couldn't go outside the entire break. I took yeah. them to the children's museum the, on New Year's Eve, and they it they acted like they had been caged animals for a week. They were so excited to go there. They were running through the whole place, and they then, weren't the only ones. I'm sure that were. Oh no, that. it was packed, and yeah. everyone, all the kids were just beyond ecstatic. And normally, I can keep them there for you know an hour or so. Then they're ready to leave. Well, four hours later, oh my God. I told them that my husband was coming to pick us up because I also had him drop us off at the door because I was not going to park. Right. And ha- try to take two little kids on a half mile excursion through downtown in negative 10 weather. So anyway, I told them, OK, daddy's on his way. And and my little son goes, oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> It was almost, I think it was better that we did go over to Sugarloaf, even though we didn't really ski much, because I feel like the change of scenery helped, and we took some board games, yeah. and my kids learned how to play cribbage, and we tried out some of our new games, and I think it helped to not be here and stewing about. And we'll have that, I think, Friday. Yes. We're going to be here. That's my prediction for a snow day. We'll see if it comes to I pass. think it'll be early release on when tomorrow, because it's supposed to be a the blizzard. Banks, like a bank just, um, Bangor Savings just announced that they're closing at 11. Yeah. So I feel like it might be early release tomorrow, too. So it's supposed to be pretty nasty, but we're ready. Kelly's especially ready. She has a generator, and so mm-hmm. I'm ready because I have a friend with a generator. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I was thinking about it. I said, we're going to have the entire neighborhood between our house my neighbor has a my neighbor has a really nice generator that basically you wouldn't even notice the power's out right we just got one that could run our furnace and our fridge well and sometimes like sometimes people will just take them and like run it long enough to heat up the house to get the pipes warm and then right. take it away and come back you know the exactly. next day or whatever but hopefully we won't need it i don't have any more trees that can well except for that one but um <laughs> Trees can't really fall and it the other thing is that the last storm where the tree fell on our house and everything was because it had rained and because it was fall, a lot of those tree issues were uprootings and not the wind snapping them. Uh, so because the yeah, so like the meteorologists true. were saying basically because the ground is frozen now, there's not going to be an uprooting. It's solid. It can't uproot like it could. It would just be if the ice gets heavy on the lines or something. Right. Because they were saying they do expect power outages. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be as widespread as our October storm. We're hoping. So I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know how I live here because I hate being cold. I haven't left the house in, I didn't leave the house in days. Because I, I, in fact, I had, so my acupuncturist is just in the neighboring town and I asked them to ship me my, <laughs> I take this homeopathic supplement and I said, oh yes, is shipping it an option? And they said, sure, we can ship it to you. I was like, great. And then I ordered my father-in-law some, a bow tie for Christmas with that matches the kids. It's this like space bow tie. And so the woman wanted to meet up with me, but I was going to have the kids because they were on vacation. And and she wanted to meet up with me in the Starbucks in the Target. And I thought, that's crazy. I'm not going to drag the kids yeah. out of the car, negative 10. So I said, well, do you think you could ship those? She, The woman lives in Bangor. She shipped them to me. <laughs> You know, what? I don't even feel guilty about it. No, exactly. I hate cold weather. But I have one other thing to tell you. I oh. So, you know how you say your sister's always like me? Mm-hmm. Well, I want to tell you that my sister is not like you. Because she <laughs> called me to tell me how excited she was because they had this Yankee Swap holiday game at her work. <laughs> and she was so thrilled because she won. She ended up with a $10 Chick-fil-A card. <laughs> And Gretchen doesn't go to Chick-fil-A I, for political I, reasons. I thought of you immediately when she said how excited she it's was. It's like all my favorite things, Yankee swaps and Chick-fil-A, <laughs> and that is entirely sarcastic. Um, all right, well, we had, a, we had a great holiday. It was the first time my parents weren't here, but it worked out great, and we were cozy, and it was really kind of nice to be just us and to be snowed in. I always love being snowed in, but Dave doesn't like hearing that because he's never really snowed in because he just has to go out. He does Shovel. all of the shoveling and yeah. the snow blowing and the roof raking and he yeah. does a very good job and I'm very glad that he has that because I'm like, oh, I'm cozy and I'm going to play a game. We're going to do a puzzle and Dave's out there working his tail off. The one thing that he got this year that he really liked though was the um, lighted hat 
Did I show you that? No, but we got headlamps. So we got headlamps. That was kind of a, a, a rollover from the October power outage. So the girls each got a headlamp, but he got the hat that has the lights. Oh. And he used it on Christmas Day to snowblow, and he said he really liked it because he could, like, point his head up and look and see the roof to rake. And when he was, he always, <sighs> we're very uh, serious composters here, and so he always snowblows a path to the compost. But that's not illuminated back there, so he could see his compost and get to that so he really mm. likes it. so that's an l bean lighted hat which is kind of a neat a neat little thing if you're looking for something for whoever something somebody something for somebody who doesn't really like things yeah i guess i would say that's kind of a it was practical. very practical i know well, it was crazy on, it was crazy on christmas because james cooked this elaborate breakfast then we opened the presents and of course the kids wanted them to put together their 600 piece playmobile <laughs> kits which take yeah. literally two hours then it snowed a foot in the meantime so after he got done that he had to go snow blow for an hour and a half and so i felt kind of bad for him but yeah you have a longer driveway too he said next year santa needs to put those together the night before yeah i can see that happen but your house looks yeah. really big see this is the great thing about christmas you take out your tree <laughs> yeah. and it feels like you have a whole new house totally yes it does feel big we took that out and we're also going through we've gone through the basement and we're bagging up stuff and doing like a big purge of stuff but and i also i also got a new recording rig but we can't use it quite yet because dave thought that this mic would work with it so we're waiting for the second mic to come so next week we are going to sound like rock stars it's going to be amazing pros so let's talk about what we hope for the new year what our resolutions are and what our goals are for the new year all right so mine is really focused on money okay me too and so my goal is I would like to, pay, I'd love to get my student loan just gone. I've just yeah. had it for a long time. And it's under, it's not even five figures. It's not a huge number, but it's just this mm -hmm. thing that's always there. It's like the, you know, when you get used to something in your house and you keep walking around it and keep walking around it. And then you think, wait, why don't I just move it? Yeah. Why do I, why did I put that there in the first place? Is That's how it kind of feels like. So that's one of the things that I want to get rid of is my student loan and the other thing is that my van is probably reaching the end of its life yes. and so we're hoping at like this time next year maybe like december of 2018 we can get a new car yes those are my two big goals we almost have the same goals but for anyone out there listening about the student loan goal that gretchen has you might think getting out of debt is crazy or impossible but it isn't and it is really, it's it's life-changing after you do it. You will have so much more money when you yeah. don't have debt. It's, it takes a lot of organization and determination. But once you get in the habit of it, it's really not hard. And actually, it's kind of fun, like finding out different activities you can do for free mm -hmm. or different ways to save money. Um, mostly with food. A lot of it, sadly, is not going out to eat. But even last night, we went to Blaze downtown. Mm -hmm. And that place is kind of expensive. We had a gift card. But they, I didn't know they had happy hour specials. And they're really good. They're, it's very, it's so much less than going there during. Was it the duck fat fries? No, I, that <laughs> might have been it. But pizzas were 25% off. You could get wines for $5, which is cheap because mm -hmm. the regular wines are like $9. $9. And I think Timber has similar happy yeah. hour. So there are, it's not like you have to totally deprive yourselves, but there are very simple alternatives to save money and every dollar right. counts right so i i just i recommend it so much to anybody because it saved i it's changed our lives completely and sometimes i even get irritated when people are like oh you're lucky because xyz is like no okay you know it's not about luck this is about six years of commitment to, to one yeah. single goal yeah you know six years of basically living like you are making poverty wages so I'm gonna. So when you did that, and I'm gonna ask a question, you can answer it or not. Yeah. Did you still contribute to your retirement accounts? We didn't. Okay. James regrets it now. We talk about we we just had this big conversation about how we were really f proud of ourselves and glad mm -hmm. we made all these choices with finances. But that was one choice that, in retrospect, we probably should have kept at least the match. Mm -hmm. We didn't even do that. Yeah. We were super, super gazelle as dave ramsey would say yeah. i mean we were all in i mean we would even we were down to like 
turning the lights off, unplugging the toaster, anything <laughs> we weren't using when we were using it. We shared a car. We walked wherever we could. Was that, were you in Boston? We were yeah. in Portland and Boston throughout mm-hmm. all of this. When we moved back up here, we had been out of debt for a couple yeah. of years. Um, but yeah, we walked everywhere we could. We didn't buy clothes. We got stuff for free on the side of the road and refinished <laughs> it. Um, but just about any possible money saving measure we did see our like and mine is that we are and i forget how what's micro and macro i feel like the, like i feel like these terms would apply in yeah. this scale of economy but in our day-to-day life i feel like we're always just like checking along but in our but we've always contributed a lot to all of our like hsa and our all our retirement accounts and all of that so when you look at when you look at the big picture right we're awesome yeah but like the day to day, I would like to get a new car is not right. And obviously, I'm not going to cash out my part of my retirement to buy a new car. Right. Even if I could do it 10 times over. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's silly. That's silly. Yeah. yeah. So, But it's but it, so it's sort of frustrating because it can feel very for me, it can feel very like treading water. And, and actually, I, I've looked um we, got a, we had a system added at work recently, like in the last year where you could see all of your pay stubs going way back. And I've always felt like I'm not making any more money, even though I've had raises and I've had, you know, different things. But when I actually compared, I've saved, I've put so much of my money into savings accounts as they've popped up and been available to me that I'm actually bringing home less than I was when I started and made hmm. a lot less money. Yeah. Which is sort of bizarre, but like I take advantage of our dependent care reimbursement account. So I yeah. just submitted my receipt to get that money back. Um, so that's when I get back at the end of the year. I take advantage of our HSA. I've always maxed that. Uh, we we don't max our retire like to max your retirement account is like thirty thousand eighteen thousand or something. Yeah, I think I you can. Max my, I think you can do. You can do a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I couldn't because so I actually just looked it, into but that we too. Put in, we put in a lot. Yeah, and so even like my so even my paycheck in twenty seventeen was like the amount that went into my checking account and savings account or whatever was less than 50% of the money that I earned. So this year, one of the things, so to try to get that student loan paid off, and it really is, and it's weird because it should not be this mental, but I have backed off on the HSA and I'm not gonna contribute to it until I get that paid off. And I only feel confident doing that because I have the maximum out-of-pocket money that I would need. So if something happened to all of us, I have the money in the account ready to go. I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And if something happened that I needed to then start putting more money in, you can always, um, it's not like open enrollment with your HSA. So I could in six months say, okay, now I want to, now I want to max my HSA and just put in $400 a paycheck instead of 200, which is what I have been doing. But it feels a little weird to not be saving that money, but it's to pay off this other money, this other money, but it still feels very weird because I love those tax advantaged <laughs> you know it's big savings accounts that are really earmarked for just specific certain things like retirement and health care so that's one of that's that's my first strategy is to reconcile that with my brain like, okay we're going to take this money and my dependent care child account i used to max at five thousand every year and now i think i'm doing uh, like this year i think i did 25 and i think next year i'm doing even less because i'm down to just aftercare for one kid and not much summer camp right so I'm like, oh, I barely made, spent the money this year. So I had to readjust for next year. But. Yeah, we are more than, ma- I mean, we max out the dependent care accounts. Oh, yeah. So if anyone's wondering what that is, you can, most employers offer it. Mm-hmm. And you can put, you could have money taken out of your check pre-tax to go into an account to pay for child care expenses. And it does cover camps. Covers I mean, day camps, doesn't cover overnight camps, yeah. <clears throat> but like the cooking camp counted. Yeah, that's great. And then I asked for a receipt from them and they sent like this whole page of like, this is a hands on. I'm like, I just need like your tax ID <laughs> and, the, and the number. Like, that's all I need. But they were so thorough about it. But I, but um, I didn't even realize I could do that. So even like the expense of cooking camp, yeah, I was able to pay for that tax free, yeah. basically. Well, we pay way more than the tax oh, I max. Used to. Oh my gosh, it's it's wild how much child care is. Oh, yeah. But just knowing you can get a little bit tax mm-hmm. deductible, and it's easy to do. 
And even and even when you do that, the other thing, and we are not tax attorneys, so no. Oh my gosh, contact your <laughs> HR and your own accountant. But the other thing, like my plan would let me when when I had when I was maxing it, like with a kid in full time daycare, you just do. Yeah, you could fill out a thing that it would actually direct deposit right back in. So because they knew I had fixed expenses, yeah, like you were definitely going to spend five thousand dollars at this childcare. The child care would fill out the form and I do a direct deposit. So and it's one ninety two thirty one. So I would look at my check and it would say one ninety two thirty one deducted to your dependent care account and then my bank statement would show one ninety two thirty one deposited into your checking account. Like it never I never lost it. Since it's been a little bit less since the girls have been in school and out of that regular five day a week, fifty two week daycare situation, I have to I, I just let it build up. That's what we bought Dave's Xterra actually. A couple years ago, we just let it build up till the end of the year. And mm. then that was like a, like a Christmas club, only it was for a mm-hmm. used car for him. And then we just submitted all the receipts and got the cash, and that's how he went and bought the car. Well, it's a, it's a smart idea because this is kind of what we do. We take, we have so many different uh, checking and savings accounts, which could get a little, <laughs> there was one time when it, it became a little bit dangerous because you can get confused. Although I don't know how I'm going to get confused because I don't even track any of it anymore. But <laughs> so one, so if you're looking for a really simple way to budget, because Dave Ramsey's budgeting, I think for us, it's just way too complicated. We did it while we were getting out of debt. So he believes in cash only um, budgets and having envelopes for every category. And it's just not the world we're living in right now. I can't do cash. I can't. We we try. We did it, and it, but it was so time consuming and just a huge pain in the butt. So, basically, what we do now is um, we take a certain percentage of my paycheck and we put it in this one account, and then that's for things like exactly what you're talking about. Like there's there's budgeted and figures for upcoming expenses like a roof. Yeah. Each year, we usually have a thing that we know is going to come out of that account. And then it pays all the standard bills that we have every month, like our life insurance and yeah. our kids' college funds and all of that. So we don't even see that money. It just goes into that account. Things are paid out of it. And then there's... A, it's all your fixed expenses. Fixed expenses and then savings. So yeah. then at the end of the year, we will have a nice mm-hmm. amount in there that we know is earmarked for X, Y, Z. And then I have I work a side job, and that goes into its own account. So that's for like big unexpected expenses, right. um, like a renovation mm-hmm. or a car or something like that. Right. Um, and then James now works full time, and that's where I think we could do better mm-hmm. because that just goes into our main account, <laughs> and that has been very fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just bought you a generator. Yes, which exactly. Is be helpful. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We have it set up. Um, sort of similarly, we have actually two banks because we'll have a bank and a credit union because we use them each for different things. Actually, one of the things I just got from our credit union, Ingrid had started a savings account there and she hasn't put money into it for a while. So I said, I think so we're going to charge. And she only has like $110 or something. But I wanted her to have the idea of putting money away, seeing interest grow. They just charged her $5 because it's inactive. And there's yes, take five. this happened to us like, this once. Should be, this is a kid's account. Yeah. Like you should... Like, let it sit. Like, she's not working a job and direct depositing every two weeks. And if she doesn't put money into it, yeah, it's still a hundred. I don't know. It just, it bothered me. Yeah. So I got to go, I have to go and like add money to it to reactivate it or something. But it was really annoying. But we, so we have a credit union, we have a, the bank and Dave has refused to ever use the bank debit card. Like he just, he's had the credit union account since he was like 17 and he just is not open to change. So... <laughs> I, I deal with the money thing, so I actually send him, like, I don't want to call it an allowance because that sounds too childish, but I, like a fixed number goes into that account. Yeah. So he always has money that he can, when he goes to the ATM, he has money. We use that to pay for dinners out and stuff like that, and that that's his money. Yeah. So he gets a little allowance, and then the rest goes into the bank account where I use it to pay bills and to do that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I, so one of the things I'm doing, and I'm going to try to be good about, is um, using a budget software, and I just set it up yesterday as part of my new year's goal to try to track it and to try to really see because i feel like sometimes it's like where do we spend our money on like, right where did it go i don't understand where yes. it went so the system i'm using is called you need a budget so it's ynab.com and i actually got a uh and I, I got a three-month trial from another podcast from another blog so if you are in at the i'm, gonna, I'm not going to give the code because i feel like that's not fair but if you check out younghouselove.com they're like 
this family that renovates houses and stuff. But younghouselove.com has a promo on their site for a you need a budget extra trial beyond. They usually have a 34 day one. And I think it's 34 days. So you can see like beyond a month to compare. Mm. But um, they have a three month trial. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sign up for that. I'm going to put the app on my phone. I'm going to start like writing down everything. So yesterday, um, Willa started her new dance thing. So I have a category for kids activities. Like how much are we actually spending mm-hmm. on kids activities and how much are we spending? That is going to make you sick. Probably. I don't <laughs> think it will right away <laughs> because, oh. and the reason why I say not right away is because I've already bought their ski tickets. I've already paid for their ski. Oh, lessons. so it's hidden. It's hidden. So it's in the past. Yes. Yeah. So it will in like September, October, November of next year is when, of this year is when I will probably be like, what the hell? Yeah. But, and plus, um, in grade and middle school, there's a lot of free activities. So, like, yes. field hockey was free. Right. And she might do a swimming well, thing. Well, Gretchen, and that's free. it's not free. It's paid for out of our very high tax rate. Yes. Well, it's paid for <laughs> by the taxes that I happily paid a little right, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, and, and because I pay those taxes, there are other kids in those activities that have never had the opportunity exactly. that our kids But have it's not had. free. Right. It's not free. <laughs> But so, but it's not coming out of my paycheck directly. Yeah. Well, it's good because you're not double paying. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because we're paying right now. Right now, I'm paying for everything. And so, even then, I've always limited my kids to basically like one activity a, a season. Yeah. Um, with skiing being the outlier, just because they take ski lessons because they get to go and spend February vacation with my parents and stuff like that. So. Well, that's kind of like a family. I kind of almost write it off as like I would have to send them to a day camp. Or I can have them know how to ski and send them to Sugarloaf. So I kind of equate yeah. that in my brain the same way. Well, I think there's, in Dave Ramsey, he says that you should look at your budget and see if it aligns with what you care about most, mm-hmm. where your money's going, like put your money where your mouth is, basically. And we did, so we were looking at our graphs one day, and the kid, the kid's graph was like, woo! I mean, it was double anything we're spending on anything else. Right. Because between childcare, preschool, and then things like, hockey, summer camp, ukulele, and every yeah. other thing that pops up, art camp and all this, it adds up so fast. This is one of the primary reasons for ending the lineage, the show <laughs> line. I'm like, we cannot afford another child. <laughs> the, um, and you talk about Dave Rams a lot, and I used to listen to his podcast a lot, and I haven't listened to it in a while. Me either. I and should listen to it again, because mo- it is motivating. He's super cheap on his podcast. He used to be super cheap. He only he would put up one episode and then take it down the next day. So he had to listen oh, to it really? every day. There was all, like, back episodes. Oh, and wow. So if you're not familiar, that. Dave Ramsey is a super Christian and super sure. Christian financial guy. And I like a lot of his ideas. There's, like, a couple that I, like, one of them... That I haven't agreed with is that he would have said that we should not have gone to Disney World until my student loan was paid off. Yes. And I said, no, screw that. We're going to go to Disney World because I want to go to Disney World when my kids are kids. Yeah. And I and my parents, like when we went to Disney, my parents were our young enough grandparents that like I said, there's no strollers and there's no scooters. Like there's no one on wheels yeah. in our party. This is great. And I wanted to go and have that experience with my parents and my kids and and even then I did like all kinds of things to like save us a bunch of money on the trip in general and we had an awesome time and that's the kind of thing that like okay so my student loan still has a balance and I'm okay with that because I have this memory that we bring up regularly like the girls still talk about it my parents talk about it Dave talks about it and it was like this awesome family vacation yeah and if I had waited to pay off my student loans and gone when they were like I don't know say if I pay, if I paid on the on the actual program or whatever They'd be like 12 and 16. They'd be miserable. My parents might not be able to go with us. Right. But, you know, like, yeah. it might not have been the same but thing. But it's not so. like you were going to Disney every year. No. I, it think, was like, I still think that's probably Dave Ramsey light. It's not that far off from what yeah, he it was like a, it was like a, and it was very, you know, specific. And the other one that I veer from him on, I mean, aside from, I obviously don't tithe, because I, I, but I do give. I give to the ACLU every right, month. Right, right. That's my tithing. Yeah. Um, What's is, that? American Civil Liberties Union. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> $10. We give, we give a bunch of money to whoever we're feeling like in the month. Yeah. So I do that as listening like an Whatever automatic Whatever need, need comes up. <laughs> and the other one is the car payments thing. So he's very much like, do not have a car payment. Always yeah. be in cash. Always do that. Yeah. And I totally get that. And the last two, like, like we've only had 
So Dave and I have been together for 18 years. And in that time, we've only ever had two periods where we had a car payment. And one was for his Subaru that he had for 13 years. And one was for my van that we've had now for seven years. N- not the car payment. We've had the, we had the, so long we had the car. Right, the car, yeah. And it was like, I think Dave's was like a four-year loan. And mine was a five-year loan that we paid off in four years. Mm-hmm. So I kind of veer from him on that a little bit because we... I totally agree and don't have a perpetual car payment. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as it's paid off, we weren't immediately driving back to the dealership. And even then, when we, we even like we bought like high mileage used cars, but they were quality cars that we knew would last for a long time. Yeah. So we keep our cars for a very long time. And then since then, the last two cars Dave has had have been cash cars. And because they've been like $3,000 each. And Dave's very handy. And so he's like, his thing is that I can keep one older car running, but trying to maintain two older cars was tough. And now that he has the Subaru, it's newer than mine. So he doesn't have as much maintenance to do on that. So we can kind of focus on mine a little more. But our ultimate plan, so when he's talked about getting a new car, is that the next car we get will have a payment because we're going to buy a newer car. And But it would be a payment. And we're looking at cars. Okay, what's a car that will last us for like taking Ingrid to college? Mm-hmm. taking will at a call you know like we just don't turn over like, i see people who turn over cars and finally it took me a while to realize what was happening because i felt like i would see these people with new cars all the time yes because people do like, that i'm like what the hell like how do you have a new car and then i realized that they lease right so and, and i have friends at least and it totally it totally is has a need for people who need it in that time yeah but even talking to one of my friends who said that you know she wants to get out of that leasing cycle because it does sort of perpetuate itself. And right. So I'm, so I'm glad that we haven't ever leased. There have been, like, there have been, um, there's been some, like, really crazy lease deals that are almost better, like, I don't want to say better than buying, but, like, better than renting a car sometimes. Yeah. But they're not cars that we would want, so. Well, and I so think. I'll, you know, there'll be, like, a $99 a month lease for a new car, but it's not, like, a car that we want, that Dave could get through his work. I almost think that the Dave Ramsey financial program is almost like financial rehab. It's like, you know, with anyone struggling with addiction, you can't be like, Mm -hmm. oh, you're an alcoholic? Well, you're just going to drink a glass of wine on Fridays only. Mm -hmm. But, and and I think for many Americans, we are way out of control with our spending Mm -hmm. and we have a kind of almost a dangerous culture with keeping up with the Joneses and way extending ourselves beyond what we're actually making Mm -hmm. in reality and it's not you and so you can i think moderately yeah choose where you're going to flex your spending you're going to have a car payment and so even when we have a car payment it's like i don't even want to but i don't want to have a car payment right until my student loan is gone yeah until like i look at that i'm like okay so we can do that and the one time we when we bought the van it was when Ingrid went to school. So it was like, okay, we just freed up like a bunch of money from daycare spending. So we know we have it. So let's just, and like I needed re-shifted. to replace the car. And that, <clears throat> that was another situation. And that car was one. I mean, like when I think back, so I bought this car. The one before that was a $2,000 cash car. The one before that was a car that I had a loan on when I was in my 20s and kept for 10 years. Like, <laughs> so I've always... It's not like I've always kept the cars I've had or if I if I had a loan or I paid cash. Even the one I paid cash for, I had for five or six years. And yeah. it, we, we finally like sold it because it had 180,000 miles on it. So, Well, Dave Ramsey has this thing. Have you ever looked at the YouTube he has about how to never pay for a car again? That's what my, that's what my parents used to do it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I can't remember the specific details, but something along the lines of buy a car you can pay in cash, like a $1,000 car, yeah. drive it for six months. So while you're sp- the whole time put the amount of money the yeah, average car payment. car payment is like four or five hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. so put that in the bank because you're going to be paying that anyway on a car payment right um and then upscale your car and it's i don't know how many how long it takes to get to like a decent car but i think it's four or something years four years ish but i'll find the link and put it on you because it's very interesting and then after you have a decent car like right now we have good cars yeah so every month if you put 500 into mutual funds yeah in let that appreciate the, you can live off the dividends and then always pay cash for a car and the well and the other part too is that 
when I say like I would have a loan for a car, it would not be a predatory loan. Right. It would not be a 20% loan, weekly rates. It would be like a... 0% or Right, like a 0% yeah. or 0.9%. Like those are the types of loans that we, yeah. would, that we would qualify for because of our credit situation and that we could... So it would be like sort of the best possible loan and not the worst possible loan, which is... I mean, and that's a reality for some people, and especially in a place like Maine where you have got to have a car. You can't not have a car. And it's... And if you're in a situation like us, you also really have to, each person has to have a car. If it's two people going to work each day, it's really hard to get by in one car, I would think. Yeah, I mean, we used to do it, but now that he has his own job, we could never survive on one car now. Now that you're both working. Yeah, and we are, and it's always, it's like in and out. Like, both of us kind of have a similar type of job where you may, you could work from home for a couple hours, but then you got to go to a meeting on the other side of town, but then you may be right. back, but then you got to run out. And there's, like, and, like, and there's no public transportation. No, not not like in a city, a, right. you know, a bigger city. Right. So you kind of have to have a car. But yeah. So, th- so that's one of my goals. So so to meet yeah. those goals is one of the things I'm doing is doing the you need a budget thing mm-hmm. and trying to keep track of everything. I'm actually not including that Dave's ATM account. I'm kind of just like... like He's not, on his own. Like it's, it's not his own. It's like its own thing. It's like found money or something. Like it's not going to be part of the equation that I'm doing with the with paying down the student loan and doing all that kind of stuff because that's the if he wants to take the kids to the sports arena he uses that like that's sort of extra fun money and it's one less account that I have to manage and it's not well we were it's not that much a week you know what I mean we went out with some women in the neighborhood after one of the green drinks nights and she was saying her and her husband do something kind of cool it's similar to what we do but there's they have another account for each of them and a small percentage of the check, their check goes into this each of their individual accounts, mm-hmm. similar to what you're yeah. doing with Dave. And that's just considered complete blow money. Yeah. But it just goes in. So it's still you can use a debit card because Dave Ramsey would say that needs to be, blow money needs to be cash. Yeah. And cash, again, I just, for us, is yeah. too much. <laughs> right. And, I mean, because nowadays, you know, your check. Like cash on hand. Right. Cash yeah. on hand because we get paid once a month, both of us. So the money goes right to the bank. So then you've got to go to an ATM, take out mm-hmm. cash, sort it all out. Now you've got all this cash. Like I'm not going to go to the grocery store with $200 of cash. Right. I'm just not. I don't even think it's safe nowadays. And honestly, whenever I, like, I don't carry a purse. Whenever I do have cash, it's ridiculous. If I come back, I'll be, like, emptying my pockets. It'll be like, here's three crumpled dollar bills, and here's a five and a receipt. And here's, like, it's... Yeah. It's just not how my brain works. That's how mine is, too. I'm, like, terrible. pulling it out of my pocket. Oh, I had a 20 in here. Yeah, I, I know. No idea. I'll find that. I'm like, oh, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I used to call it um, laundry lotto, like, especially when I was younger and was going to the laundromat and checking my pocket. I'm like, oh, my God, $20. I haven't worn this coat in six months. I just got 20 bucks. This is awesome. So, laundry lotto. Well, you're. I know you're going to be successful because you have a plan. It's very clear where the money's coming from. And it's very, it's completely realistic. Mm-hmm. You're not like, you know, I'm going to save up a hundred thousand. I'm not going to eat out at all. I mean, I still right. heard you say you're going to, Dave's going to <clears throat> keep his money to take the kids to sports arena or whatever. And that's like the money that he uses to go, like if we get takeout pizza, he uses that card because he just never, ad- never adapted to the other bank. Yeah. <laughs> so, so which is fine. So use that car, like bring it pizza, use that card. And that's sort of like our dining out stuff that's not coming from. So the whole budget is being built without that $75. Right. And, and the, so I think you're in a good shape because you've got extra money from that HSA to put somewhere else. Some people are in such bad financial shape. And that was really us. You have to get another job. Yeah. I mean, you really do. Yeah. <laughs> or you're never going to get yourself out of it. And that's really how we did it. We just worked yeah. a couple. I worked a couple extra jobs. Well, that's so that's and the it, other thing. And then you can plow through it quick, quickly. That's the other thing that I would love to figure out is a side hustle. Have you ever heard that term? Yeah. I, I got I, my own side hustle. It's yeah. worth it. Like, and I, so I would love to have a side hustle. And Dave and I have talked about, like, we've talked about all kinds of different ideas. And it's something that we keep thinking about. Like, what could we do? What could, what, what are our skills that are available outside of our regular working hours and stuff like that, that yeah. we could somehow bring in extra money. So we're, I, we're talking about different things like that, what we could do to just to, to bring in extra money and just say, Hey, maybe if we could get enough money to, you know, pay off that student loan or to write down payment on a car. So the amount we like, 
the amount we finance wouldn't be 100%, which it wouldn't be. But what can we do to get there? Right. Or your kitchen. Right. Other things you want. Right. And I mean, it doesn't have to be forever. The, I mean, I used to work three jobs and that was way too much. And now I just do a side one. But it's so, I mean, it takes me very minimal time. I enjoy it. It's not yeah. any, it's no, really no big deal. Well, it's like so related it's, to what you do. It's Yeah, exactly. It's not this whole other thing that I've got. To, it's not like I'm going to the hospital and working 12 hours. Like I could right. not do that. I could. You're not delivering pizzas. Right. You're not working at Target. Right. It could, I couldn't, I couldn't go to a clinical job with my kids. It would be way too much of a distraction for my quality of life but right. so it, so I choose to do it because it's not that much of a burden on my life but the second job thing if you need to do it isn't it doesn't have to be forever right it's just temporary so you can get yourself in so then maybe after you get all the finances taken care of maybe then you can go to a job you love because the thing that I think ultimately is the fundamental most important reason why you'd want to get out of debt to begin with is so that you can choose jobs based on what you actually want to be doing right. that provide you a schedule that you know balances your family so that you can have a good quality of life. You know, you hear so many people talking about how they hate their job. They hate it. Right. But they can't leave it because of money reasons. Mm -hmm. And it always makes me so sad because they could. Right. Probably. You know, most people, and this isn't everybody because I know... It can be, I think it can be harder here because of the geography yeah. and the economy and the limit and then just we have limited options right like if you're in boston and you don't like one hospital there's how many to choose from a lot yeah and here there is one right and well, then there's, there's another one yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, not but that you much. know like a lot of people will say to me oh i would never go into academia they don't pay you anything you know they'll say that all the time but then like those same people when i have good breaks and time off they'll be like oh must be nice yeah. you know it's like well that's advice I'm taking well that's you know? also the you know and what's the currency you want and you know yeah. you and I both could make a lot more yes. money in other doing what we do right. in other fields but like with my summers that's the currency I want is time yeah. and so if I could use time to pay off that loan then great but I would my, but same thing like with the Disney thing right. my kids are only going to be Disney so, young once. once and they're only going to be you know, wanting to go with me to the beach club and hanging out for a very small window very, of time. Very small, yes. And even like we, so we went skiing and our friend and her son came over who went to cooking camp with Ingrid. And I was texting Kelly and some other friends who have littler kids because her kids are like <laughs> kindergarten and younger. And they came hmm. over and the two big kids who have been to cooking camp made, they made our dinner, they made breakfast the next day and they made breakfast on the second day. We went out to dinner the, the second night. And so we were sitting there, the moms had a, each had a glass of wine, the big kids were cooking <laughs> us dinner, and I was like, oh my God, like, how did this happen so You arrived. Fast? You arrived. We've arrived. Yeah. You know, they haven't gotten to the point where they're hating us yet. But it was very much like, it was kind of a thing like, it's really short. Like, the days are long and yeah. the years are short. Yeah. And it's so true. So, you know, so like with Dave Ramsey, like his big thing, do you, um, are you, so you're not right now trying to pay off your house with every penny you have. No, I mean, I probably should. <laughs> I probably, well, I, cause, because he, that's what he would say. Right. But we we do have a 15-year mortgage, um, and we do have a very low interest rate. And my husband, I really drove this Dave Ramsey home. I was yeah. the definite cheerleader. We're doing this. <laughs> like, he yeah. was so bummed. And the thing is, is that when we were in our 20s, we both had really good paying jobs, no kids, what is it? They call them dinks. Yeah. Double, Double income, income, no, no kids. kids. <laughs> and that's when I was in the height of Dave Ramsey. And so we did nothing. And my friend Shira, who's been on the podcast, she's like, oh, gosh, I hated it when you guys were doing that. Because they would be wanting to do things. And we're like, oh, sorry. We're getting out of debt. We can't do that. So, so he sa I think he sacrificed a lot because I don't think he would have done it the same all right. in the way I did. Like, I think he would have been more like you. Yeah. Like, well, let's do Dave Ramsey light. You yeah. know, let's not do Dave Ramsey Turbo. Right. But I was all about Dave Ramsey Turbo. So now I feel like I have to have some kind of concession because I probably would be like, let's pay this house off. I don't like having a house payment, but he's more like, why would we do that? It's our, pay, our interest rate, I think, is like two point something percent. That's, that's the other thing. Too, you know, is our interest rate is three. Yeah. And we actually have a 20 year, but we pay it off like a. 15 years like we have bi-weekly payments yeah so we are paying it off pretty aggressively yeah um and now we're in the part like you know in the graph where it shows like we're in the part where like the 
You're actually paying on the principal. Yeah, yeah. Like the principal's going down. And it's like, oh, wow. Yay. Yeah. And that's the other part with our retirement accounts. Like the thing that lets me sleep at night is that I'm like, you know, if if Dave and I were both, I don't know, fired from work and rendered permanently disabled and could never work again, and we had no means of income forever, we could still, we could, you know, and there's penalties and we never would, but we have enough in our, all of our other accounts that we could pay off our house and still have a bunch of money left off. Right. And not have to move and we'd be, we wouldn't be homeless. Like, that's yeah. my, like, yeah. that's how I sleep at night. So I'm like, okay. So right now, yeah, I have this stupid student loan. And it's not a stupid student loan. The student loan has given me my career right. and my opportunities and all these other things. And I, and I know people that have, like, six-figure student loans. Oh, Yeah. And that wasn't, that was never me because a lot I of did a GA and I, you know, I did other things. I had scholarships and I had grants and things like that. Yeah. So it's not even a huge student loan compared, but it's just that thing that I keep bumping into and keep walking around and I just like to have it. Well, I think the other thing too, is that um, if people are wanting to get out of debt, downsizing a house can make a huge difference because like Gretchen's house, you probably, what's this, like 1200 square feet? Uh, 1,000. Okay, right. So we, <laughs> so our old house before we moved here was 1,000 square feet. And the cost to run, because it's the initial purchase price is one thing. Yeah. But that's just one thing. Ca- running a house, a bigger house, is a whole other thing. Because you were saying, you were talking about your heat pump bill. Yep. Ours is like triple. You just have the one heat pump? Yeah. Wow. But our house is big. You know, yeah. it's bigger than yours. It's probably oh, twice, is... more than twice the size of your house. Oh, totally. And so that is a cost in every way. Like, our heat costs more, electricity costs more. Anytime we have to do a project, like, we could, you and I could paint this whole house in a weekend, probably. Oh, good. I'm glad you're out. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying. Doing, like... That's what we're doing. We're, we're doing the uh, ceiling. This spring, because when Dave put up the lights for the ice storm, and he took down the tape, you see, oh, he yeah. used painter's tape and thought it wouldn't affect the ceiling. Whoops. So now it's all, but it's all crappy anyway, so we're going to paint the ceiling. But even when you do spring. your kitchen renovation, it's yeah. going to be a fraction of the cost of someone with a kitchen twice your size for countertops. Like, we, we mm-hmm. redid that little house that we owned before we moved up here. We put in granite countertops. We did a fa- bathroom facelift, so it looked brand new, but yeah. we did, like, rebath, which I actually wouldn't even recommend to anybody. <laughs> um, and we painted the whole place. So it looked... I'll show you the pictures. It looked... It ba- it looks very similar to my house now, but with... Me. Less... Yeah. A smaller house and probably not as nice of stuff. And also, also, right. also it was all hand... Like, self... DIY, DIY. <laughs> but we did all of that for ten thousand dollars the entire yeah. house nice. so that's the other thing about having a smaller house is that you can your money goes a lot further like it's inconvenient i'm sure you wish you had a bigger house sometimes but financially it can save you a ton of money right well that's i mean that's also the idea and that's why i when we talked on the hgtv episode how i tip you know like should we move should what should we do and now i'm kind of like well I would almost rather put more money into this house and just stretch it out a little bit. Yeah. And make this one work because it is, you know, because we have paid so much down on it because we have been really, we've been pretty aggressive with our house payment. That's why I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like Dave Ramsey, like spread all over the place. Like instead of just being like, (laughs) first I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. Like take a lot of his ideas. Like I never, I've never liked his advice to not contribute to your retirement. Yeah. James hates that advice too. I feel like that's not awesome advice yeah and so i don't follow that i'm like no we're con- and even actually when i had willa that was like we were gonna have two in daycare with them, which was a fortune yes and i was like well maybe i should like ease up on my retirement accounts for that but when i had them run the numbers i was gonna pay basically the same in tax that i would have been putting into my retirement accounts yeah so i feel like there's some things that if you're if you're following the dave ramsey thing to just sort of have your hr run have your payroll run the numbers and say okay so if i contribute because the money that you put into a tax advantaged account lowers your taxes almost to the point that if you didn't put it in there, you'd be paying that in taxes. So you're either paying yourself or you're paying the IRS. So if you can adjust it and find that balance where you're getting enough. So I'm interested. I'm actually interested to see what my next check will be like without my HSA. And I'm a little 
anxious about it, but it'll be good. Well, so just to give you a quick review of what he says to do. So he says to save a thousand dollars first, so mm-hmm. that because he says calls on the baby steps. You can yeah, like, baby yeah. steps. Like on ever on average, every emergency is a thousand dollars or under, mm-hmm. so that you don't have to put it on a credit card and perpetuate the cycle. And then the second is to. Um, do a debt snowball. So he says to ca- get all your debts, all your bills, and then organize them from lowest to highest, and then pay down your lowest one first. And once you pay that one down, use all the money from that bill that you were paying on that bill to do your next bill, and then so on and so forth. Like some financial advisors will say, choose the bill with the highest right. interest rate and blah, blah. But he says, just put all your energy because then you feel successful. I actually think the debt snowball is his best advice. Yeah. And the thousand dollar emergency fund. So like when then once you pay off all your debt, it's save up a six month emergency fund. Yep. And then a six month emergency fund. And then it's then it's contribute to your retirement. Yeah. Then it's buy a um, house with a 20 percent down on a 15 year note and and then pay pay it off off. and then contribute to your kids college, your Roth IRAs and all that like at step seven. Yeah, but which, it, so those see, it seems overwhelming when you're looking at all of it. But just simple, the debt snowball piece, I think, is his trademark, the best. And what we did is we had this huge debt thermometer that was about as tall as me. We had fifty five thousand in debt, I think, which isn't nowadays. Right. At the time, it right. seemed enormous, but nowadays, when you hear how much, how many loans kids will graduate with. It's so sad. I mean, even if you go to local pri- public schools, the cost mm-hmm. of education is just so high right now. Um, and so we had it right in our front door, like right when you open the door, every single person saw it. So <laughs> everyone knew this was going on. Yeah. And every time I made a contribution, I would fill it in with red. So nice. it was visible where we had. And then we did the same thing. Oh, there goes your Christmas tree. Oh, um, no, <laughs> then Then we, we did the same thing for... When we were saving the down payment for our house, I did that when I went to Australia. Yeah, when I was in when I was twenty four, twenty five, I actually had a separate account, and I, I wrote the word Australia, and then I filled in a letter. It was because it's ten letters, I think. So I had to save up. No, I it, think it's no, nine, but maybe it A-U-S-T, is T A U S T R A L I A nine. Yeah. Anyway, so I filled, but I filled in parts of it. Oh, maybe I made like the. I like a dot like there were 10 pieces and so when I got 10% I filled in a letter and I had it on my closet door yeah and that's how I saved up the money to go to Australia and that these but are that was like pre Dave pre kids pre pre student loan debt pre everything well that's you know that's similar to the vision board so for yes. good you know just for quality goals was what we used to do in wellness coaching is you should have a visual reminder and also accountability mm-hmm. so it's kind of it's a fun way to be accountable so do you have a good resource for vision boards I don't have a good resource for vision boards. I usually just would do them with people. Like, and I, so we, what, what I would do is, um, I have this wheel that I use for all my research. It's called the Dimensions of Wellness, and it actually fits in really well with our name of our podcast, Balancing yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Because it's all about balance. And what's wrong, I believe, with our healthcare system and just health, of how we value health in our society, is that it's super focused on physical. So if you hear anyone talk, it's always about either their medications or how much they weigh or all these things. But according to, you know, a balanced holistic model, all these other areas are equally as important, like your financial health, your social Mm -hmm. health, your relationships, your marriages, your relationship with your kids. All the marriages. All the marriages. (laughs) Yes. Um, Your spirituality and however, which way you want to define it and if you are if yours is through yoga or reiki or church or religious affiliation or whatever it may be and when one of these is out of balance like say you're in a career that you just hate Mm -hmm. you just it's my you actually hate it you dread going to work every single day you know the theory is that that's going to negatively affect every other right dimension of your health your physical health your blood pressure your weight your motivation your Relationship with your family, you may be more irritable or snippy. So when we would sit down, first I'd assess, I would assess all these areas with people. And a lot of times people were surprised, like, oh, wow, we're going to talk about this because we're so focused on, okay, my goal is I'm meeting with a wellness coach. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. It's like, well, right. it'd be pretty hard to do that if you are miserable. Right. Right? Right. Why would you want to do that if you're miserable? <laughs> so... So usually I do that, and then we would create, like, I'd ask them specific questions. In your ideal world, in a perfect world, like, don't tell me why it can't happen. 
what would your career be? Yeah. And I had one woman who was like a analyst or something and she wanted to be a screenwriter. So she did. I mean, every week we worked on goals and they were all about her creating her own screenplay. Did she get it? Did you do it? I don't know if she ended up actually <laughs> publishing it, but she wrote one. And that woman was Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, sorry, HIPAA. <laughs> no, no. That's a joke. <laughs> joke. Kelly has never worked with Shonda no, Rhimes. No, I haven't. Directly. But it's, you know, I think that's a, if you just look at each area of your life with your finances, with your career, with your relationship, with your, whoever you love, you know, is it how you want to be in a perfect world and we're so obsessed with why things can't be or why they right. why they won't work but if you can it's just it's basically Trump yeah, it's Trump <laughs> <laughs> right exactly we're gonna do this it's gonna be great yeah. so there's that and then um, and then the other thing is visual reminders and but the most important is that you have to be it has to be a priority in your life that's actually a priority for you and important to you and you have to be really confident that you can do it. And we do. We typically do these confidence rulers. You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, where is this as a priority in your life? 10 being the highest mm-hmm. and 0 being not a priority at all. And then explaining why you picked the number you pick. Like if you pick an 8, well, why didn't you pick a 10? Well, why didn't yeah. you pick a 2? Because so often what happens is people will make goals because they think they should or because someone has told them that they have to. You know, we see it a lot with students. Like, I don't know if you see it with your students, but a lot of times students don't even want to be a nurse. But Their mother told them it was a good job. Their mother, their parents only had to do it. And they're miserable. And I feel horrible for these students because they're, I just... No one tells teachers to be a teacher. Right. (laughs) If anything, they tell them the opposite. Well, I I had, when I was teaching at another university a while back, um, I used to do this icebreaker was similar to this. Yeah. I'd say, you know, tell me your dream. What would be your dream job? And I always expected them to say something related to the field that they're studying. Because right. this was an interprofessional class. And one girl said, my dream job is to open a bakery. But, um... And I said, oh, but aren't you in physical therapy? And she goes, yeah, but my guidance counselor told me there was no money in bakeries. And that I was too smart for it. I was so mad. We had a student, well, we had a, our career uh, counselor talks um, to classes and tells about a student who was a PT student who got through to a certain point and went to meet with him. And he said, why don't you like PT? And she said, I don't really like touching people. Yeah. But it was the kind of thing where it was like, this is a good job and you're smart and you'll make a lot of money. But she hated touching people. So they worked together to find a new career path for her. But it was sort of like, you get know, a little bit sidetracked by the nut dollar figures and the earning potential and and the career opportunities yeah. and all this. But if you're not happy, then what's it matter? Mm-hmm. So so what is so your yeah. goal for... So your, what's your goal for so your finances? So I want to save up enough money. My husband and I, we want to buy another multifamily. And then I think for next year, it will be to buy that new Subaru that you sent me. <laughs> the three-row. Yes. What's I am it? a... I'm a, the a Subaru Ascent. And oh, I am it a, is nice. I am a committed, diehard minivan. I love my minivan. Minivan life. Hashtag minivan life forever. <laughs> but there is a new Subaru coming that is turning my, catching my eye. Yeah. And the fact that it has the captain's chairs and it has the three rows, but it is smaller and it doesn't have sliding doors. But it has a lot of the features that I think my, because I would keep it for so long, I only have one kid in a car seat anymore, in a booster seat, and she's probably not going to be in it for that much longer, maybe a year or so. So I'm looking at features that would be more more conducive to teenagers, basically, than little kids. So I don't, but again, this is all like totally hypothetical because I'm not buying a car now, but I did let Kelly know that I had had my head turned by a non-minivan for the first time in Many years, and I love so. my Subaru right now. I so, love we had so that's, a, that's what we've always had a Subaru. There was only like two years that we didn't have a Subaru between us, and that was the two years we had the Xterra, two or three years. And um, like I, I've been taking Dave's car in the morning to the gym because I'm like, well, it heats up faster and the seats are warmer and it's yeah. not as frosted over, but it's just more fun to drive. So well, we've we'd be in perfect timing because if you pay for student loan this year and we do the the rental, the multi, then next year we can get a used. Yeah. Someone who's ended their lease 
yeah. which is a better deal. And we get matching Subaru. Yes, we'll do we'll it two for one deal. we'll get a with our podcast logo. <laughs> and we'll make James drive around. James will be like, no, <laughs> definitely not. James would be into it. So yeah. that's, those are my, that's my big goal. But the other, I have a couple little ones. I'm going, my friend gave me this idea. I'm going to start trying to use the, um, bring my grocery bags when I go to the oh, grocery. Yeah? Because, see, down in southern Maine, plastic bags have been banned. Yeah. So you have to bring your bags, or they charge you for paper bags yep. per bag. And also styrofoam has been banned. And so I did a great job when I lived down there. Yeah. But now I'm horrible. Yeah. So I'm going to work on that. And um, I'm also going to work on just not being on my phone as much, mm-hmm. which is really hard. And that's a terrible goal because it's like, oh, not being on my phone as much. But I think at night, after the kids go to bed, I need to do something else, like read a book. Or, yeah. so I, I'm going to start reading a book at night or watching a show. Being more mindful. Being more mindful. Because what happens is the kids go to bed and then I just play on my phone until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Which cannot be good for you. No, I don't think it is. But I'm the same way. Oh. I've been doing better though. I've been reading a lot over this vacation, which has been nice. I've been reading on my KonMari book. <laughs> and I think I realize why you don't like her. <laughs> why? I, I have been ignoring it, but... I really like the book, so I was like, I wonder why Gretchen doesn't like this. So I've been very mindful of why you don't like it. And it's, she's ridiculous with what, how she describes something. She said one of her things was in your laundry room to take all the tags off the laundry soap and tie ribbons around it to increase joy. Yeah, screw that. And I'm like, I'm not, definitely not doing that. My my laundry jug sit next to two frigging litter boxes yeah. so there's already no joy right like and a ribbon isn't gonna help it it's gonna make the cats try to eat it yeah and then no that's so stupid i i just feel like she's i feel like she's just a little too too a little too much but. so i think i think the language could be really off-putting but she has great storage ideas and i've done almost my entire house now and it is so much easier to keep your house tidy as mm-hmm. she would say if everything has a spot so I was really intentional about... Everything in my house has a spot yeah, in my house. Everything, <laughs> having a location and training the kids on where it goes. And they're, they're getting better and better Good. about putting their own stuff away. Because that's half of it, is yeah. just constantly picking up after people. And totally. James would, is going to laugh when he listens to it. It's like, oh yeah, Kelly, I pick up after you too. So, But I really have enjoyed the book, and I think I'm going to read another organization book after this. Ooh, then you can organize your organization books. It's been funny. <laughs> it's like a total detour in my normal self-help books that I read. Interesting. Yeah. So what is your uh, favorite thing? Right now, my new favorite thing, which is a very old favorite thing, is Dirty Dancing. It's my (laughs) all-time favorite movie, and I haven't probably seen it in 10 years, but I went to the live show last night. Yep. And it was so good. I got really motivated to take a dance class. So I need to watch it because I know now as an adult, like I've read that it's about, like there's an abortion story in it that I never picked up on when I was in junior high and watched that movie. I can see because you must have thought she was just sick. Yeah, I never, yeah. like, so I never, I'd have to watch it again and be like, oh, yeah, so there we go. Perfect. Oh, it was so good. Some, there were mixed reviews. Some people didn't think it was that great, but I thought it was amazing. It was the, the best. I don't usually like to pay for entertainment. Mm-hmm. Like, we went to the Celtics game. I was like, oh, it was cool, but yeah, kind of expensive. Like, I don't know if I'd want to make a habit of it, but this was totally worth it. Awesome. Yeah. So mine is going to be my my pop socket. Oh, I want to get one of those. Which my sister gave me for Christmas. Can I and see that? Yep. My um, my kids each have one on their little devices. And I had actually ordered one from Warehouse Deals because I was trying to be cheap, but they didn't send it with the sticker, so I couldn't use it. Like, some part was missing. Oh. So my sister gave me one for Christmas, and I've been loving it. And it doesn't do well for keeping off your phone, but it helps you grip your phone, and it's also like a stand. And, it, and if I had put it a little lower, I think it would also be a stand to hold it the other way but, yeah but it doesn't quite balance that way i wonder if they make these for but, tablets oh yeah you can put two on tablets you can do all kinds of stuff oh. so you can do different things and so it was, and it was like i know they sell for like ten dollars from the ones that the girls have so i have been and i always thought it would feel like make it feel extra bulky and it really doesn't feel that much more bulky than the actual case a lot of people have these nowadays yep well that's like our neighbor said, oh, what's a pop socket? I'm like, you have one on the back of your phone. <laughs> it's like, oh, is that what it's called? I'm like, yes, because I noticed people having them. But, Gretchen, is, it's a miracle you still, you don't hit us all when we ask you these crazy technology I questions. I would never hit anyone for a crazy technology question. <laughs> We're always like, question. Gretchen, we got a problem. <laughs> what do we do with this? Although I do know how to use Google Drive really well. Well, so does she now. She brought me a bottle of wine. I showed her how. Oh, on Google Drive? <laughs> yeah. 
Google stuff. Google like, stuff? through Google Apps. Oh, I've actually day. never done that. But yeah. I was well, just like, talking Google about Google and, Sheets and Google Docs. No, that's what I mean. Oh, you can buy wine through that? <laughs> no. I guess I don't. I spoke too soon. She brought me wine as a... and. As payment for me to... Oh, <laughs> okay. I was like, wow, I'm so behind the times. I did a three-way call the other Google day, though, on my awesome. iPhone, and I was pretty proud of myself. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so we're going to wrap it up, and we will be... Next week, we're going to have a guest, and it should be pretty interesting. Mm. And we're going to be uh, talking to her. And so we hope that wherever you are, that you are warm and dry and not shoveling too much, unlike us, as we're about to. This yeah. is the calm before the storm. Like, look out. It's sunny. It's 19. It's warm. We're feeling warm. Wait, I think it even might have gone up. It's 24 degrees out. Oh my gosh. So we need to get I'm not even going to wear a coat. <laughs> we need to go frolic in the sunshine. We're going to throw off throw our coats. It's going to be awesome. And um, so thank you for listening. You can always find us on Facebook and you can email us at mm-hmm. balancingchaospodcast at gmail.com if you have any questions or friend us on Facebook. And please feel free to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And I have seen a couple new reviews. So thank you for that. And we hope you have a great week. Bye. Happy 2018. Yay.